uh, welcome to Home of Secret Marais. My full name is Secret Vandergalian. I mean, my first and last name, but like, why would I go by... Why would my channel name be Home of Secret Vandergalian? Sounds like alien, so... I wanted to talk about... Um, finally talk about, for those of you who have followed my last two videos or three videos I have wanted to talk about this but just didn't have the time or wasn't in the right headspace and everything to talk about it um, so yeah this is about homemaking and encouragement for homemakers and stay-at-home moms <coughs> <coughs> I have a little sticky note because I just trail off into circles. I, okay, I trail off into circles. I trail off into like a circular, circular circle. A circular circle. No, I go off into trails and then I end up coming back to where I want to come, where I want to be eventually in the conversation, but um, it takes a long time. How I became a homemaker like how I decided that was what I was gonna do and just like a brief overview of that um, when COVID started um, I lost my you know waitressing job and um, I Matt my husband you know didn't lose his job so he continued working and I was just at home and I kind of um, me and him both kind of realized that it was a lot less stressful this way and that like a lot of tension that was there uh, when we were both working a lot um, or like even me working a little bit less than him even you know if you are going to be still you know working and you're not going to decide to be a homemaker, like, it would just, <laughs> trust me, make a world of difference if you would just sit down and, like, decide who's going to do what, um, because that was, like, a big thing. But I feel like even, even if we would have done that and I was, like, working, I think we did try and do that, but it's, like, oh, no, it just, like, it didn't work out as well as it does now, being a homemaker, just, like, you know, knowing like, okay, I have, you know, I'm going to do all of this and like he'll help out where he can or if I, you know, I'm falling behind in something or if he sees it needs to be done. Who are you? Oh. All right, sorry. My little brother came up. He's, uh, he turned 13 a few days ago, so we had him over to sleep over and do, like, projects with my husband. They're making, like, cat towers and stuff. Once I became a homemaker, you know, decided this is what I'm going to do, just, like, the tension, a lot of tension that Matt and I had, like, disappeared. We were, it seemed like we were able to serve each other better in that way, too, because, like, he could, you know, work and provide for us, and then he could come home, and I could have a meal ready for him or um, just have like things done and it's not like he has to come home and be like oh I have to get this done I have to you know we have to do this stuff together and you know make sure we have clean underwear the next day or like what are we gonna eat for dinner just like he didn't have to worry about that and I don't have to worry about like making the money it's not like he makes a ton of money like we we're pretty you know pretty average maybe below average actually we we make it work because it's like it's worth it to us to have it this way especially now me being a mom i just can't even imagine having to go to work like it just would throw everything off with like my my rhythm that i have with charlie and just knowing his his needs and routines it's like if someone else had to take that on it would just I feel like be a lot more difficult <laughs> it's not like you have to have a lot of money to be able to be a homemaker and like a stay-at-home mom um, you just kind of have to cut back on things like we 
don't go out to eat that often at all. Um, I get everything like thrifted. Basically, like all of his, he pretty much, he doesn't have any clothes really that are new. Um, they're all thrifted, but I find cute stuff. I mean, there there is wealthy people who buy nice things and then give them to the thrift stores. So yeah, food is probably like what we spend you know the most on because we buy like organic and stuff so that's kind of where we like splurge you know as as believers if you're a woman i don't believe that every woman is called to be a homemaker stay-at-home mom as like you know many would many would probably say or have you believe but um there's just you know so many women in the bible who weren't who were you know missionaries or didn't seem to be like staying home they were businesswomen so it does seem like there are some like homemakers who did have like a side business in the bible too so that's pretty cool but um i mean some women and, and it also says you know not everyone is called to marry i but i do think that um if you are married and especially if you have children, I would say, you know, if you're married, that's, if you're just married and you don't have kids, you know, you can be a homemaker. Who are you? Your husband, who are you? I do have, you know, what I, what I believe God spoke to me about homemaking and like, cause I was kind of, um, I was kind of in, becoming insecure. I feel like the enemy was maybe speaking lies to me. Um, just like, despite those verses, you know, in the Bible, um, talking about the necessity and beauty of, you know, staying home, making a nice home for your family and taking care of your children and teaching them there, raising them there. Um, like, despite those things, I feel like I was thinking, like, I have to, for me to, like, be, you know, a part of the kingdom or, like, be contributing to the kingdom, I have to be, you know, out having a job or you know talking to people um outside of my home and stuff which you know I do but like more so you're able to more if you have like a, a job around other people and stuff and um man I'm hungry honestly I am hungry I think I need to eat stop and eat because otherwise I'm going to be running out of fumes and not being able to like give my whole heart and mind into what I'm about to read, so. Wow, my, uh, my storage on my phone became full and then I had to go in and like delete a bunch of stuff and then, um, yeah, I have to... I have to delete it even more. I would love, I would love a camera for Christmas, like to take, to have a lot, you know, to have a memory card and a camera that I can just, you know, fill up with videos. I, it's not like there's a bunch of apps and stuff on it. Um, even if it's used, I mean, I don't care if it's used. I just would love a camera. I don't know exactly. <laughs> There's two verses that kind of like say this, um, but just in different ways, and I forgot where they are. I think one of them is in 1 Corinthians, but um, this came to my mind. Whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Um, so like, I just love that it says like, whatever you do, like, because the kingdom of God needs every kind of work. It's like you're not more doing more for God's kingdom when you are working for a church or you know 
you're not doing more for his kingdom when you're in that kind of um, field of work. It's every kind of field of work, like whether you're digging holes, um, <laughs> whether you're digging holes somewhere or building buildings or taking care of children or, you know, creating um, sustainable farming techniques or um, clean beauty products or whatever. Like, all of it can glorify God because um, we were made to reign and rule over the earth. We were made to subdue it, to cultivate it, to build a kingdom that glorifies God and that um, serves him and one another but we are saved you know forgiven for our sins yes but also redeemed and renewed made into a new creation so that we can be reconciled to God to our intended relationship with him and reconciled to our calling and identity that he created us to have and that is to rule and reign over the earth as his representatives, as his image bearers, in a God-honoring way. And you can do that in so many different ways. And there's this verse, I'll, I'll type it below in the um, description box because I don't know it off the top of my head or where it's from off the top of my head. Um, but it basically says, like, you know, the work that you do, God will test it. Like, the work they do here now, God will test it, you know, whatever you're building um, or contributing to the kingdom now, he'll test it later. And, like, if it's done with the right intentions and if it honors God, it will last. It'll, and I think that means, like, yes, be, I mean, the God is going to remake, make a new heavens and new earth. Everything will be made new. So it's like, it's not going to be the same earth, but I think things are that we as believers do here now for the kingdom um, as, you know, the people of God, those things he will bring into the new creation. Like they will last, they will be, saved they will um you know those won't those things don't go to waste like there's another verse somewhere <laughs> see i'm really good at remembering like little you know like verses but like i don't even know where they are um but it says like your work is not done in vain so it's not like we just do all this these things and then um everything's burned up doesn't matter <laughs> um but then it goes on to say, like, the first verse that I was talking about, that, um, you know, if it is done in... Hello. So, um, as you can tell, that is where I lost most of my videos um, at the very end. Um, some in the middle, but, yeah. The ending, I don't even know how much more video footage I had that got deleted. But um, that's why I'm here, just trying to fill you in a little bit um, from where I left off. So, again, I'm hungry, so I'm like not in the video headspace Again, well, I was kind of in the video headspace, but, like, I couldn't think as clearly as I wanted to, and that's just what's, that, that's just what happens when you breastfeed, I feel like, especially because you just have to eat so much more, or at least I feel like I do. I feel like I have to just eat so much more food to make up for the calories and nutrients lost breastfeeding, and it's like, I don't have... I don't always feel like I have time or I don't even know what to eat. So, like, then my brain gets foggy. Yeah, basically I was saying that um, what you do in this life, you know, Scripture says that um, if you're doing it genuinely out of 
um, you know, service to God um, out of gratitude and and with a heart for the kingdom to build his kingdom, to follow and trust his ways and live as the people of God, as new creations, as, you know, kingdom citizens, then that will somehow, we don't know exactly how, but it will somehow last into the new creation and be a part of eternity. Which is really cool. So that, you know, it's, it, scripture says, whatever you do, do to the glory of God. So um, that obviously includes homemaking and raising children and taking care of your family and your home. And um, I'm going to share um, after this video, I'm going to plug in some scriptures that I <clears throat> that kind of confirm this and um, will encourage you in that knowing that you know this calling is is a high calling and it's worthy and valuable to God and to the kingdom and I know that's kind of a weird word kingdom if you're not a Christian you're like what the heck do you mean by kingdom basically it's just like that could be a whole nother video as well but it's just like another word for city like because you know, in the, in the new creations, when God makes everything new, he's going to make what was in the, in the garden, everything was perfect and, well, in a sense, it was perfect. We were supposed to, you know, subdue it and create from there. It was a, you know, a wild garden or a wild, the earth was wild, we were, but it was good. And that's kind of the same with the city. It's going to be, um, you know, a place where everything is new and redeemed and um, just good and perfect. But it's it's going to be like the garden in that sense, but also but in a in a, another sense different because it's going to be. Um, just bigger. There's people. There's a lot more people now <laughs> than there was before Adam and Eve, like, you know, multiplied. Um, but multiplied, had babies, then everyone else was created and born, whatever. Um, I did want to read, I'll, like I said, I'll put the scriptures in that um, I, I think I read in the videos I got deleted, but I'm going to read now um, some quotes that I really like. Um, I think this is my first, my or my favorite one. I believe that a godly home is a foretaste of heaven. Our homes, imperfect as they are, must be a haven from the, out, from the chaos outside. They should be a reflection of our eternal home, where troubled souls find peace, weary hearts find rest. Hungry bodies find refreshment, lonely pilgrims find communion, and wounded spirits find compassion. And just as a little thread of gold, oh, this is a different quote. And just as a little thread of gold running through a fabric brightens the whole garment, so a woman's work at home, while only the doing of little things, is like the golden gleam of sunlight that runs through fabric and brightens all the fabric of civilization. That's Laura Ingalls Wilder. The first quote I forgot to say was Janny Ortlund. Um, the way you keep your house, the way you organize your time, the care you take in your personal appearance, the things you spend your money on, all speak loudly about what you believe. The beauty of thy peace shines forth in an un in, in ordered life. A disordered life speaks loudly of disorder in the soul. That's Elizabeth Elizabeth Elliot. Um, if you have been afraid that your love of beautiful flowers and the flickering flame of the candle is somehow less spiritual than living 
and starkness and ugliness. Remember that he who created you to be creative gave you the things with which to make beauty and the sensitivity to appreciate and respond to his creation. That's Edith Schaefer. Um, there needs to be a homemaker exercising some measure of skill, imagination, creativity, desire to fulfill needs, and give pleasure to others in the family. How precious a thing is the human family. Is it not worth some sacrifice in time, energy, safety, discomfort, work? Does anything come forth without work? Edith Schaefer. Um, this is also a really good one. There are homes in which there is nothing remarkable in the way of grand in the way of grandeur or elegance, yet the very atmosphere as you enter is filled with sweetness, like the smell of a, a field which the Lord hath hath blessed. It is the aroma of love. The love of Christ shed abroad in human hearts. Religion is lived there. The daily prayers bring down the spirit of heaven. Christ dwells there, and his blessed blessed influence fills the divine tenderness, all the home life. If we could make our homes truly Christian homes, our daily lives must be like our daily prayers. The prayers must be lived. That's J.R. Miller. A true home is one of the most sacred places. I think this is actually the one I liked a lot. I mean, I like the other one, but I like this one more. It is a sanctuary into which men flee from the world's perils and alarms. It is a resting place to which at close or at close of the day the weary retire to gather new strength for the battle and toils of tomorrow. It is the place where love learns its lessons, where life is schooled into discipline and strength, where character is molded. I think Charlie's might be waking up. Far more than we know, do this do the strength and beauty of our lives depend on the home in which we dwell? He who goes forth in the morning from a happy, loving, prayerful home into the world's strife, temptation, struggle, and duty is strong, inspired for noble and victorious living. The children who are brought up in a true home go out trained and equipped for life's battles and tasks, carrying in their hearts a secret of strength, which will make them brave and loyal to God and will keep them pure in the world's severest temptations. That's also J.R. Miller. So, um, I just remembered that a really important video <laughs> that was at the end um, of what I was filming uh, a month ago or whatever, um, was deleted and it was just me talking about like when I when I read some of those quotes um it reminds me of homes that I've been in personally and how powerful those homes were and how like influential and how much of a resting place those homes were um I'm sorry, Charlie is squirming on the monitor. I'm sure I'm going to have to go up soon and get him. Like, for example, there's two homes that I think of in particular. Um, I've been in many Christian homes that are not, I don't say many, many, but a fair amount of Christian homes where I've just, you know, like felt the presence of God and felt like, you know, the person had truly a gift of like hospitality and generosity and um it did it did feel like a foretaste of the new creation and one of those places were my grandparents house growing up um because long story short Okay, I think I have to go get Charlie. He's really confusing me here, like usual. Alright, this lighting is especially bad. And still on my iPhone, but this is filmed, I don't even know how long after this last clip. <laughs> this is literally the jankiest video. Um, but soon, things are going to look a little brighter, a little newer, a little fresher around here. 
um, because for Christmas, which was like two days ago, I got a video camera from my dad and stepmom. So that is super exciting. It's like, you know, obviously, I mean, not obviously, but it's not like super, super expensive, but like it's it's a pretty, you know, nice one. I think it's at least, it's a 4K, has 4K quality and has like a nice microphone attached to it and like the thing that you hold to like make the camera steady and then like something that attaches to the um, lens, I think it's probably f to like help with the glare and the lighting and whatever. Um, so yeah, that's gonna help, mostly it's gonna help with, like, the fact that I can just, you know, put a memory card in there and I, that's the sole purpose for the camera, it's like only taking videos, whereas, like I've explained, like, my iPhone, it's a pain because I don't only use it for taking videos, I have so many apps and, like, other things on here that take up storage so like trying to continually make storage and whatever like on my phone was not sustainable so um I'm excited about that um I'm not sure like when the first video um when I'm gonna make the first video with that camera so I'll have to get a memory card and like kind of just pray about what the next video should be and plan it out a little bit. Um, and then I think after that, you know, once I post that, um, I'll get probably more in a, more in a rhythm, a regular rhythm of like filming and posting and stuff because now I have a little bit more motivation to film and edit. Um, I think I'm still trying to figure out if I want to use a different, I mean, I would like to use a different editing software. Um, I'm just using a free one right now, but I think my husband will be cool. I think he said he's cool with, you know, paying for one, you know, depending on how much it is. But this is all a process. Um, we'll see where this takes me, but I do feel on my heart, like, to share, share what's in my head and my heart. Um, with the world in some way and for now this is how I'm doing it um, and yeah so also why I'm filming this little video is because um, my last clip had to be got was cut off because Charlie woke up um, so basically I just wanted to like bounce off what I was saying. <laughs> this is such a weird video. Um, like all the, like this video spans like months. It's so weird. But um, yeah, so I was just saying that the homes, yeah, the homes that inspired me like to, inspired me to have a home that is a foretaste of heaven, of the new creation, um, of God's kingdom, like, those homes were, I mean, there's probably, like, four homes that stick out, um, two friends, how, friends, well, friends' parents, then a friend's grandparents, then my own grandparents, and then, um, probably my aunt's house, um, yeah, they were all, they were all, like, a shelter for me, a foretaste of God's kingdom for me, like, a refuge, a place where I gathered strength and wisdom and was cared for and saw, you know, like, beauty in just, like, how people um, cared for God's word and cared for um, 
cared for people that came into the home, their homes reflected like God's creativity, reflected God's beauty, um, with like how they decorated, how they took, you know, things from the natural world and made something from it, like how God in the garden told us to, I guess I should say Adam and Eve humans, and um, told them to tend it, tend to the garden, to work it, and take care of it, and um, also, like, it says in Genesis, like, all these raw materials that he gave humans and to use, and then he told them to subdue it, to um, cultivate creation, to rule over it, to reign, and so, like, all of these things that he's given us, these blessings, um, we can, we are to use for not only, like, functional purposes, practical purposes, but also to create beauty, and, um, it even says in Genesis as well, like, God created the trees, trees that were pleasing to the eye, that were good for food and pleasing to the eye, so, um, I mean, not only there, but lots of places in the Bible he talks about just, like, um, things that are pleasing to the eye that are beautiful, things that aren't, like, needed, but when he talks about how he dressed people, um, or, you know, how he even dressed, like, Satan before he fell, like, he was wearing gems and jewels and beautiful garments, and so, like, God... God values those things. They're not, you know, the highest, most, the most high value to him. There's things that are much more important, but those things are still, those things still matter to him, and those things are still part of what make us human, like taking beautiful things that God has made and creating something out of them. Another thing that also inspired me to just have a home that people can walk into and, like, feel like, wow, this is like a very peaceful, beautiful place to rest and, you know, be with other people and be taken care of. And so that's that. Um, I guess stay tuned for my next video. Sorry about this lighting. It keeps getting worse and worse. <laughs> um, but new things are coming. Better cameras here. Thank God. Um, and yeah, take care. Happy New Year.